Uh, banks up 2% today, uh, up like 14% on a month to day basis. Is it all about just the bond market rallying and, and taking some of the balance sheet pressure off? Mike, I, I think it's some of that, no, no doubt about it. Um, certainly at the beginning of the year, of course, many of the uh, investors were very concerned about the unrealized bond losses. And to your point, they reached uh, levels that were very high at the end of the third quarter. And now the 10 years come in quite dramatically since the start of the, the fourth quarter. But more importantly, Mike, it's all about credit. Credit yeah. trumps interest rates, in our opinion. And if we have some sort of slowdown, which it seems likely next year, but it's not a hard landing, it's not a recession of the 1990 uh, level or the 08, 09, the banks are going to do very well. The banks are well positioned today for the Fed to stop raising rates. And if we get a soft landing combined with the Fed being finished, we're looking at a period where the stocks are greatly underowned by the long only community. And you're going to see some really meaningful performance, in, in our view, in that environment. Yeah, I, I have to see uh, even Goldman Sachs hedge fund positioning data also showing uh, hedge funds have rock bottom exposure to financials. But on the credit point, you've, you've seen everybody kind of getting a little bit alarmed about the upturn in consumer delinquencies, no matter whether you're talking about straight consumer loans or, or credit cards. And right now, it just looks like normalization, right? You're just going back to the delinquency rates of pre-pandemic normal times, but it's hard to know if it's going to stop there. You put your thumb on it, Mike. I mean, it, the normalization trends are underway. We've been talking about them all year. And it really comes down to does normalization lead to deterioration? And then that is equated to, of course, the employment picture. And if the unemployment rate, you know, if somebody's of the viewpoint that next year's unemployment rate could reach 6 or 7%, then you're going to see far worse credit losses in the consumer. However, if the unemployment rate tops out at 4.5%, we still have all these... Uh, labor shortages that we're experiencing today, then it may not be that bad. The other thing, too, is that, remember, the banks have already reserved for many of these losses under this new accounting that came into effect in January of 2020 called CECL, Current Expected Credit Losses. So they, they are prepared for this. And I think if, if the um, economy is a soft landing or a mild recession, and if it's a mild recession, think about this for a minute, Mike, the Fed's going to start aggressively cutting their short end of the curve to yeah. ensure in a year, a presidential election year, that we don't have a real bad recession. Yeah, but most likely uh, that would probably happen. Now, just in terms of within the group, quickly, you know, what stocks look like they're, they're ripe to benefit from that type of environment most of all? Yep, it's, it's the risk on name. So this year, J.P. Morgan's been the champ. It's been the best stock. It's the risk off stock. The long onlys are underweight the banks, but they do own J.P. Morgan. So we want to go risk on. Bank America certainly is a name to people should consider. On the regional front, you're looking at Fifth Third Key Corp uh, as names to own. U.S. Bank or PNC are other names that people can own. So we would steer people to more risk on names in the uh, scenario where the Fed has finished raising rates and the slowdown in the economy is not a hard landing, then those stocks are going to do very well. Gerard, great to catch up with you. Thanks so much.